on this computer. Okay, you should have a little splash screen. You can say, I got it. Beautiful. Okay, well, welcome everybody to the 25th of January. Where did the first month go already <laughs> of 2024? Supply chain and trade finance, a uh, special interest group for Hyperledger here. Glad you're all here, either uh, listening uh, after the fact to the recording or if you when you're here uh, live. Uh, as always, all are welcome, and we're glad that uh, lots of different uh, folks are here from different places, different ideas, different thoughts, and that'll be important this year, this uh, this session, because we're going to be doing some planning for 2024. So um, there's that, and um, also antitrust policy notice there. Uh, please don't say anything that's confidential that you don't want to share in public because this is an open session, et cetera, et cetera there. So those two items. And then before we really get started, I also want to thank folks on, that are here in person, as well as the folks that um, are listening to this after the fact uh, for all of your efforts back in 2023. I think we had a really good year. It was a fun year uh, working with uh, um, good people, which is always a lot of fun, makes it makes it a lot easier. I mean, getting that ebook out, it took us a little bit longer than we thought it was going to take, but uh, you know, that's, that's always the case. I guess that's part of open source. You know, you kind of go through it, you work through it, get some good ideas, keep on going. And you know, that, 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 that was, that was a good culmination of all the work from, from last year. So uh, thanks for everybody with that. Um, I'll also say a couple things. One, uh, Andrea Frosinini, thank you to Andrea. I mean, he's, He's resigned as an active co-chair, but he's still participating and going to be part of our group here. You'll still see the weekly digest coming out from him on Sundays. I don't know if he really scheduled this. I never asked him, <laughs> but I picture him on Sunday afternoon sitting there in Pisa, you know, sending out this little LinkedIn thing. Hopefully he schedules it. But anyways, um, so Andrea still is going to be... Uh, working together with us. And Jeff, another good thing as part of 2023 is that you joined us as one of the co-chairs. So that was good. So um, so, so that's 2023, 2024 here. Let me scroll down a little bit here. Um, we're, we, um, uh, Alicia, Jeff and I talked and we said, should we just keep this kind of same schedule of meetings? And right now that's the plan is we're gonna keep the same schedule of meetings every other Thursday, the time will adjust it if we have a speaker who needs to have a different time than normal. Um, but you know, in general, we'll be at the same time every, every other Thursday here. Uh, upcoming events here. Uh, in two weeks, Jeff is going to talk. Jeff has more of a technical background than either Alicia or myself. Or maybe we had it at one point in time, Alicia, and we've lost it, but Jeff has kept it. <laughs> maybe that's more it. So, so Jeff is going, Jeff has some ideas to share around blockchain, more from a technical nature in applying blockchain within a supply chain. I think you even have a demo kind of thing, right, Jeff, that you've kind of created. You're on mute, Jeff. That's starting the year off really well. Am I with the mute? <laughs> Okay. Technology. Yeah, it's 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 a demo, and it's a, really a demonstration of um, two things. One is it's a, it's a desktop blockchain written in Python that I wrote in Python, so it looks like a blockchain running. But anyway, uh, they'll be in their supply chain records. You'll see how they're brought up, how they're ordered, how they're stored. Um, this is uh, off of in, in that stepwise thing I just mentioned this. I collected that from Fabric, how Fabric handles things, Ethereum. So I'll, I'll go into that. Hopefully I'll be ready on by the 8th. I think so. You'll be as ready as we need, yeah. I'll be <laughs> okay. for sure next week, yeah. And then on the 22nd, uh, Leanne Kim from Everledger. Everledger is still alive and kicking. They've kind of obviously gone through a few changes. You may have seen that. Uh, Leanne's going to share with us. Um, some thoughts around using Everledger and G7 and the choreography of working through a lot of the sanctions type of work there. Um, so we're, we're glad that uh, she'll be joining and it also will bring in the trade finance angle, which I, and I know is near and dear to your, your heart uh, there. So you have something you can rely on to actually create the, the uh, trade finance documents. So those are the next two sessions. Uh, if you want to go back, or I guess now it's uh, it's actually released today. 
here, Alicia and Jeff and um, David Boswell were on a podcast and talked a little bit about supply chain and trade finance and blockchain. And you can listen to their deep, insightful comments <laughs> and uh, ideas on this podcast by clicking on that. Is it up now, Alicia? Yes, it actually went out yesterday. I'm I'm editing that. Thank you for catching that. Okay, no, no yeah, worries. This, I just I just added that in this morning. Okay. Oh, on the wiki page. Okay, uh -huh. I sent the link. The YouTube link to a few people yesterday. Actually, they were. And by the way, I should also really thank you, Alicia. I mean, Alicia has really been spending some time on this wiki page here to organize what sessions we have. I I know it helps me because. I and you asked, you know, where's the invite for this kind of thing? I know I can go to this page and I know where the I know where the um, sessions are, and then I can get the link that actually is going to work to get me into the session. Because before <laughs> that, before you did that, I always was looking for it and I couldn't. No. <laughs> so I'm glad that you do that, Alicia. <laughs> it helps. Hey, yeah. I, I'm glad it's helpful. Hearing that it's helpful it little makes me think, okay, yes, it's worth putting in the work. The, yeah, there you go. Is, there yeah. you go. And you know, the weekly news digest is there, and upcoming events are there also. So, you know, good, all, all good stuff. So, yeah, the Discord, she puts stuff out of the Discord channel too. That's right. That's right. Jeff, Jeff yeah. and Alicia and I talked about maybe we want to try to use Discord a little bit more. So, Alicia got me onto Discord again. Me too. Uh, here yeah. after I, I was having all sorts of problems getting there, even Discord, even Discord. Help desk couldn't help me, but Alicia did. So, <laughs> yay, Alicia. <laughs> so, so, we, we, you know, so let's see if we can use Discord and, you know, maybe expand uh, the folks that are interested or at least being able enable them to get involved. Um, Bobby, as you said, before we start recording here. So with that, let, let's get into the meat of today's discussion here. So we just did the intro. Um, Alicia is going to spend a little bit of time here on ways to get involved, which is which is is a um, an important part because we want to broaden beyond even the folks that are on here, the folks that are listening. There's other out there that folks that have great ideas and they can share and get involved, et cetera, et cetera. The other part, the SIG Charter, you know, it's probably worthwhile for us now that we've uh, been looking at. We haven't looked at it in a while. Why do we do and what do we do there? So, Alicia. I'll turn it over to you and let you talk a little bit about uh, your thoughts there. You should be able to share your screen directly or right. I hear I can stop Thank sharing. Let's we'll see that. I'm going to share desktop. Great. So I want to start by um, going over the how to contribute page. Those of you who were here a little bit early, you heard me say how I've uh, had some challenges with Confluence. I'd created a page and there was a lot in it, made a lot of edits but it was still in draft form and Confluence was updated sometimes over the holidays and everything was lost. Luckily, I was able to go in and take JPEG screenshots, found a way to take JPEG screenshots of what I had done. So I've, this morning I started recreating it based on the JPEGs. So right now got a how to contribute page talking about how people can sign and sign up, making it easier. I know a lot of people don't know how to do the LFID, how to create their Linux Foundation ID. Uh, we have links to both the written directions and YouTube video instructions. Some people like video, I prefer written. Uh, how people can add their name to the member page, subscribing to the mailing list, come join our meetings, um, asking people to introduce themselves. Then how people can contribute as a non-technical member. I haven't written, I haven't added that in yet. So let me... These are my, my lovely JPEGs. Uh, talk about how people can share their subject matter expertise, organize organize a speaker. People identify speakers all the time. Sometimes we go out and do the job of inviting them. Uh, me, Tom, Jeff, Ned. I know you've certainly got involved in that. And um, we want to ask more people to get involved bringing in speakers who they are interested in hearing from, doing research on what type of work would matter, starting a project, talking about, about your own project or a Hyperledger in pro project in general on your blog, on your social media. As Tom mentioned before, we have our weekly news digest, which 
Andre has put so much work into and now every week something goes out. It's very easy to go in here, just find the, the one for this week, hit edit, and then add in an article that you think is relevant for supply chain and or trade finance. I find it useful or I, I think it's useful to put the source of the article at the beginning so that people have an idea of what type of journal they're going to. Is it, you know, McKinsey, you know, that's research. Is it a news site, which news site? So it's very easy to add articles here that you think would be relevant and of interest to the group because the more of us who post here, it's going to enable everybody to get a different perspective because we all have very different perspectives on this world. So that's an easy way to do something useful for the SIG. Let's go back to how to think. Let's go back to, oh, it's the JPEG. Lovely JPEG. Um, yeah, so con contributing to the Weekly News Digest. Then if you're a non-technical member, yeah, that was if you're a non-technical member. Right now, we don't have a lot of technical members, or at least not to my knowledge. We've had a few people come in and join periodically, and it's even here right now today. I think most of you are more technical than, than I am. I'm just a little bit, but not, not that much. But there are a lot of ways for technical members to contribute. Certainly, um, oh, I did that. That was okay. I need to make some changes. Um, is that it? I think I misplaced my that specific JPEG. How to contribute? Um, going through the tutorials, um, reading tutorials about how to create an app, looking at you know what to do if you're an experienced developer. There is a need like right now we don't have a supply chain and trade trade finance code repository on our wiki or on discord so that's something that could be really helpful posting relevant code to the repository um it would be great if someone could create a github for us uh, i have used github in the past but i haven't used it a lot and since i'm not a developer um, i think it makes sense to have someone who yeah. has a a lot more experience on it to be involved with that. Yeah, it could um, be if, if it's needed. I, I, saw, I put all my Python source code out there. Oh, great. Jeff, that would be fabulous. Um, let If you want to, let's talk later because it'd be great to have it um, like associated with the Hyperledger Foundation site mm -hmm. and then have it marked for the SIG. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, because yeah, Radon is just associated with me now. Yeah, I can do that. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Thank you. That, that would be good because that's going to help um, we got to let people know. Yeah, that's a huge contribution. You know, a technical yeah, it's contribution. It's actually public now, but it's under an, an ID that I have. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll make it more obvious. Is it Hyperledger code? It, no, no, no. It's uh, I use GitHub for all that Python code that I put out there. So I okay. can, some used to using GitHub. So I'll set up a GitHub for Hyperledger. Oh, okay. yeah. Perfect. That doesn't mean I'm going to put that code up there. I'm just going to set the GitHub. Okay. Up. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But my code is public. Somebody asked me about it once and saw it and asked about some modules I had in there around graphics. Okay. So people can see it. Good. That that's that's good to hear. Thank you for volunteering for that. Um, people can you know improve documentation, think about proposals because we do have a page on the on the SIG wiki already planning and suggestions. Uh, and I think Jeff is actually going to go over that a little bit more today. And then um, at the bottom, there is the code of conduct for new people. It would be great if you could just review the Hyperledger code of conduct. Um, we are, this is an open source community. Everyone is welcome and we want everyone to feel welcome as well. So please do take a look at that. And if you have ideas on how to contribute, on how um, people can contribute, please do feel free to add that to the page right there. Like I said, I'll be working more on this today, but if you have more ideas, um, it's a community page, not just me. So that's that's that. And then the SIG charter. Before, before As, you go to the charter real fast, uh -huh. Ned, 
since you're on, I view you as one of the poster childs or poster children for, you know, how to contribute. You came in, you didn't know any of us, you didn't know what the story was, you kind of showed up, let's see what this is. And hey, you contributed, you helped us out with the ebook. That was great. It was relevant. It was valuable. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. we're, I'm glad you're here. We're glad you're here today. And, uh, you know, I, th I think wh whoever is hopefully some people are going to read this and say, you know, I, I'd like to get involved. Yeah. Tom, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, Ned, you, you not only have helped, you know, inviting in speakers, but you also contributed by writing, um, writing profiles for the ebook we put out last year. No, it was great. So, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Excellent. It, it's, it's great to, to see the community grow like that. Yeah. So then the SIG charter. So right now, if we go to the SIG homepage, what is up here as our introduction and scope for the most part was the scope from the trade finance SIG, which was created in 2019 with a couple of modifications. When the two SIGs, the supply chain SIG and the trade finance SIG were joined in, I want to say 2022, the scope was not reworked and it's taken a little while for us to find our, foot, our footing. I think it makes sense now for us to really think about what we're doing as a SIG, what we want to accomplish. We know we, we do organize a lot of events. We, we want to find ways to put more information out there. And by revisiting the scope, we can really think about our identity as a SIG, where we want to take that. I know Jeff has mentioned he's interested in um, being involved in reworking this. Um, so I, Ned, are either of you interested in thinking about the scope with us and um, revising that. Yeah, definitely. Great, thank you. I saw those bullet items back away, and they looked really um, almost like we're a McKinsey research group. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and... like I said, this was just taking from the prior from prior SIG. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. I just saw it and said, "Wow, okay." <laughs> yeah, and if you're ever interested in knowing how something used to look before the edits. If you come up here to the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see, let's see, page history. I don't know, I, I do this regularly. I don't know how often any of you do that. And just scroll down and see when the changes were made, who've changed them, um. Tom, Andrea. And then you can also go in and see, um, I'll, I'll go look at something I did. You can see what change was made on, where is it? Usually I get a slightly different response when I click there. Oh. So you can see, you can compare the different versions to see how they've changed. I find it useful just look at the evolution of things. I know not everyone does, but if you're interested, it, it's fairly easy to do that. And if, if you're interested and you didn't catch that, just drop me a note and I'm happy to to hop on a video call and help you with that. So um, I'll put something out over the mailing list in the next couple of days asking who wants to be involved in revisiting the scope now that we have a better idea of who we are as a SIG. So please do let us know. I'll put something out over Discord as well. Any questions about our scope? Beautiful. Okay. Great, thank you. David, I see you just joined. Thank you. And Barry, welcome. Um, okay. Tom, I think that's I think that's me for the day. I'm gonna stop sharing. <laughs> okay. Good. And uh also Barry and David, welcome here. So let's uh now we're, we're going to continue our, our uh, way of working that we're going to time box these things to one hour so that we're we're done by the top of the hour here um, with things. So now let's flip over. And this is the meat of this is uh, Jeff is going to lead. He's put together some thoughts. He'll share some some ideas of what we could do this year. 
this is totally open. I mean, mm -hmm. we got all sorts of ways we could go. The idea, the thought, at least discussion we've had is let's try whatever we're going to do. Let's do something that's achievable, you know, and realistic, right? We're all volunteers. We're all doing this for, for reasons in addition to money. So we want to do something that's achievable, realistic, and valuable to others within the community of supply chain and trade finance and Hyperledger uh, projects specifically. So with Jeff, I'll turn it over to you and let you uh, lead the charge here on the discussion. So I know I'm gonna do this. I, I have some project topics or supply chain topics I put out on the on our wiki. Oh, that's, do you wanna share the or, screen? Or do you want me uh, to share? Or you can, or you can show it. Um, because yeah, I'll, I'll share my I'll share my screen. What I, I need to on. do is come on. Oh, let me do this real quick. Um, this is what you want, Jeff. Yeah. And so if you scroll down. Um, so for everybody on the phone, so what I did is uh, you'll see, I think there's 11 different ideas around there about projects. And so uh, I actually did a, for myself, I had a, a PowerPoint template that I used that I actually sent out to Tom and Alicia, and it's really more context around the things that I wrote there. I'm not going to show that PowerPoint. I sent it to them yesterday to just say where my thoughts are. So um, you know, there's a dozen, of, no, there's not a dozen, but I, there might be one up closer there, but there's about 11 different project ideas for 24. Now, if you look at these things, there's 11 of them, counting, counting that uh, SIG blog. I think Alicia maybe put that out there. <clears throat> so <clears throat> nobody, obviously this isn't a corporation where we're gonna do all these. The, my, the idea around these was to uh, show what topics, uh, what, what I've investigated. And again, this is just a template. I'm expecting people to just throw stuff in there, but topics that I've seen in the, that weekly news digest or meetup things that I've attended that, seem, that, that appear to be very important to supply chains. And so these are all topics that are important to supply chains. And out of all these 11 items on there, can we at some point glean out a project or two? out of those and so that's what you're that's what you're looking at here although again these are mostly around efforts and you want me to go through each one um i can show the power for you to do that Jeff. just give a high level overview and then we kind of use it as a springboard for discussion from folks to be able to share their thoughts on yeah because when i stuck this out there i did a for my so I can even remember all this stuff. I have a PowerPoint and I, want to, and I have more context around the PowerPoint. So I'm going to flip my screen over and hope things match as I'm looking at this, the screen and I'm flipping over to my PowerPoint where I have more context around it. So, um, so I, I can read through these and just again, glean off. These are topics that are, in, that are of interest today in supply chains and by collecting this information, can we glean out of all this information a project or two for 2024? So um, one of the first ones that I have up there is about um, AI in blockchains. And I'm on the wrong screen already. <laughs> um, but the use of AI in blockchain, so that's a big item right now. And so one of the ideas around this is this is more of um, documenting similar to the ebook what's occurring out today in in ai what strategies are being produced out there today for the future use of ai i don't i don't envision us going out and having to do a deep dive investigation of the companies that are really using ai because i don't really think there are any that are relying on it in the sense that it's out there doing its own uh, just give an example i know somebody that's got a small marketing firm and they're using ai for their marketing techniques in some fashion and I asked her are you serious are you really using it and she said no everything that it does we double check I don't really know what that means when they're doing double work but um, um, that's really an idea around a project effort I guess it'd be something either so, something similar to ebook and also I think I had melded in there somewhat 
how does um, fabric enable AI in its architecture model, specific to the supply chain? I don't know if there's any questions on, on that at all. Let me flip the screen back. Um, the other, the next item on there is something else that's somewhat um, in use today. Again, I, I've seen some information on this as about NFTs in the supply chain. How are NFTs being used today for the efficiency of supply chain? And, and really, this is, um, you know, NFTs can eliminate a lot of the issues with the supply chain, it's mainly around traceability and see who has your materials. And so NFTs help. Um, in fraud detection and thwart fraud detection, which is another kind of topic further down. So uh, that's another idea around um, NFTs. And we can, you know, I, I keep reverting back to the SIGS charter. Do we want to, in a, in a topic such as AI or NFT, do we want to put out what's occurring out in the industry today, what the future looks like, what the companies are doing, what the software purveyors are? pushing around AI in their, in their products, or do we want to go out and put something together that shows how fabric uh, and its engagement with NFTs help supply chains? I know there's a lot there, but again, I'm just trying to bring up topics around around these things. And again, I'm looking at another screen, so if it doesn't appear yeah. that, I'm, mm -hmm. that I'm... I think if we're... Sorry, we'll keep you honest, man. Yeah. If, we're, if we want to talk about how blockchain and other technology... Um, interactions are being used around product fraud and tampering. I think it makes sense to discuss how blockchain and IoT devices are being used or mm -hmm. DNA testing of product to confirm it did come from XYZ or um, DNA, um, not labeling, but DNA codings or applications are being used on product with blockchain information embedded so that it can be confirmed that that individual product, whether it be a medication or a mm -hmm. high-end food product or something like that, is indeed the product that you're looking at the, the online profile of. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff going, in, going on there and, and a lot of people yep. don't realize how much it is blockchain and these other technologies. Exactly. There is, there, and I forgot, I should have wrote this down. Um, there is a high-end purse company who now has a, a little code on the items that they receive. I wish mm -hmm. I remember who it was. Maybe Everledger is involved in this. But really what it is, it's the public key out of key cryptography. And so you can't hack those. And so they read that public key and it goes out to the blockchain. You can tell them that this came from the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. It's the only way that you would tell, you can't hack into those. Um, and using cryptography to show that this was from Whoever is supposed to make it, because it's not a, a retread. So, um, whatever you call those fakes. Um, and I, I keep thinking it's something to do with, um, you know, it's like, see, I hate to do this because Alicia is going to call me a sexist. What's an expensive purse? Is it Calvin Klein or is it? Um, uh, Calvin Klein's not that price anymore. Prada, Louis Vuitton, Chanel. Chanel, uh, I guess Perk it, yeah. Chanel. You know, okay. um, where some people had given those as gifts and the woman was staggered that she gave those to her and they said, don't worry about it, they're cheap, they're fakes. Well, um, <laughs> I, I don't spend, yeah, reality. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't spend as much time looking at the fashion market. There, there has been a lot of blockchain use for traceability in fashion, especially in Asia. But when it comes to blockchain and <clears throat> in food and beverage, Everledger, so Le we've got Leanne Kemp coming next month. She, back in 2017, 18, wrote something called the Chai Wine Vault. And they were used, they were not only using blockchain to trace wine in general, but they were working with sensors that were applied to the bottle that um, could be used to verify whether the bottle itself had been tampered with. Mm -hmm. And that was, in 2017, that was a really big deal. That was... That was new. I still periodically see news about other companies doing that. And Chai Wine Vault was the first company I saw doing that type of work. So really excited about having Leanne come in. Yeah. In general, where, where I, I'd like us to go this year is kind of beyond traceability. Um, it's almost like 
traceability is the basic thing that blockchain can enable, right? Where you have mm -hmm. now, you have data that you believe that you know is valid because now you trust that it's on the blockchain. It was put there effectively via the whatever whatever the whatever the mechanism was to get it on there, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's valid data. And now that you have that data, what can you do with it? Is it a provenance statement? Is now I can create all sorts of letters of credit and all the trade finance documents solidly mm -hmm. off of that stuff because I have all this information, you mm -hmm. know? So mm -hmm. somewhat somewhere I keep on coming back to the old Walmart Canada story, right? There's enough sensor data that was already in place that, okay, I'm going to be willing to pay an invoice, right, for, from a shipper because now I can believe all this data. And the mm -hmm. shipper didn't believe it too there. Mm -hmm. And it's like AI. AI, AI and blockchain are becoming synonymous. If you want data that you know can't be changed and you're training your AI model, they're going after blockchain data. Yeah. 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 I think we still need to go back to making sure, like, how are we confirming that the data being input is correct? Mm -hmm. no, and I can, I can tell you, Horster, uh, uh, someone created a profile about me on a, a Wikipedia-like but, uh, but um, Ethereum-based encyclopedia, and they misread something on my LinkedIn profile. So the data that they, or I'm going to assume they misread it. I'm going to assume they were not sure. malintended. And it was entered on the Ethereum blockchain incorrectly. So now there is information out there about me that is incorrect and- Information about you? Yeah, it, it's, it's nothing malicious. Okay. It's nothing malicious. It's just saying okay. I, I have a degree that I don't have. Oh, and uh, I am, so it's on the Ethereum blockchain. It can't be changed. Bobby, I see Bobby raising her hand. Well, now you can become a politician, so. <laughs> yeah, right? There's a new lab at Hyperledger uh -huh. um, called, called AI FAQ, which what we're working on is um, two parts. One part mm -hmm. is to get an open source um, AI FAQ model out there for people to use. Mm -hmm. um, and the second is to get all of Hyperledger's information in there correctly. So mm. uh -huh. <laughs> we're, correctly. Starting, mm -hmm. we're starting with a grid. If you go to the lab section um, and then hit overview, uh, it, there's an AI FAQ and under it is a grid where we're trying to collect whether it's uh, and transfer to PDFs to feed into the system. And we have it so that we're doing checks and balances. So some one person would get the information into the PDF, another person would have to read it and approve it before it would go into the system so that everything in there has been vetted for accurate information. Because right now, with what Alicia said, if you don't do it that way, you're getting crap. Right. Mm -hmm. So Bob, this is an open source AI effort? Yes. Yep. Here I'm putting the uh, oh, sorry I'm putting a link to it in the general chat right now. Thank you, Bobby, for saying where it could be found. And we meet every Monday. <laughs> we meet every Monday if you want to join us, nine a.m. Monday morning. <laughs> Great, thank you. And that's uh, nine a.m. What, what time? It's what, on the um, public calendar. Okay, nine a.m. Um, um, Eastern time or Western time or Eastern Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Eastern. Okay. Awesome. And then yeah. also, um, just to uh, follow back, I could have some input into the NFTs and the supply chain, um, since that model, um, the giving chain, is still in play with actually Andre's group um, uh -huh. over at Block Fund and Elite Web. So we're working on getting the, actually I'm working on raising money, but we're working on getting the infrastructure in place to start doing some of these supply chain charity events again. Um, right. So, and that's done with mm -hmm. NFTs. You take a, you, know, you register an event, you take a picture of your donation, somebody picks it up, collects the NFT that that picture creates, as well as the donation, you kind of track the digital twin through the system that way, through the mm -hmm. supply chain by transferring just the NFT when you collect or physically collect. So it's kind of like a digital twin thing. Bob, I have two questions for you about the given chain related to that. One, would you love to, would you be interested in doing a webinar for this? Because I think um, NFTs and supply chain, including the, the this instance you're talking about with given chain would be of interest to the SIG. 
And sure, uh, and it would be better closer to April because I'm I'm going to present this at the um, NFT NYC conference. Oh, great! Excellent. So, we second get, question. We'll give you a drive Thank you. In, uh, late March. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm still in Florida, in March. I don't get back to Jersey until April 1st. It's too cold. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, I'm about to go back to Montreal because I like that cold. Um, uh, second question was, I remember a couple of years ago, there were some blockchain and philanthropy projects that were allowing philanthropists to track their donations and all the way to how were the... Um, how were the recipients using that money? Yep, that's Does exactly that, that's yeah. the basis for this BlockFi um, or Elite Web solution, where it's almost like programmable donations. Mm -hmm. Where so if I'm a huge philanthropist and I have um, a certain pizza pie to donate to people, and I can slice it up any way I want with smart contracts. So if like this group is showing that they're using the donation properly, then the next next gets released, you know, the next portion of it gets released. So they have mm -hmm. to kind of like um, keep track of it, earn and keep track of it that way. So it's, yeah, it's fascinating stuff. I would love to, you know, get my stuff together and present it. As a former government finance person who used to regularly argue with um, assistant and deputy commissioners and even the commissioner on, on how they wanted to spend the money versus what the laws around each yeah. pool of money were um having it automated like that would have saved me a lot of i'm not worried about the time so much but the agita the yeah. angst and the having to argue because yeah. i would have to go into them and show them the laws or show them the grant statements about the only ways it could be used when they were saying no we need to do this mm -hmm. this something like that would have been oh so helpful i have a question yeah, yeah. about the donations the the charitable donations that would be something that Charity Navigator, they would really be interested in learning about that. I mean, um, I we're to... actually going to be, you know, introducing this uh, right now. We're working on the, the piece uh, for mm -hmm. the supply chain, which is one of the reasons why I joined the group. Um, so we're, we're, we're pretty good with the programmable donations and, you know, creating a token for, for each um, donation pool and then, you know, mm -hmm. incentivizing people, you know, it's going to, going to be that way. But the uh, hard part always has been like once, so the idea of the giving chain was if there is a catastrophic event, it's almost like a 911 system, decentralized, not based on any government. So for instance, if I'm sitting here in Florida, there was a tornado down the street last week. So say that was a horrific tornado event. Uh, the mayor of uh, Fort Lauderdale has a certain amount of um, you know, interest in getting this um, event registered in the giving chain. So he would register the event and then anyone, like, so for instance, everybody's got to get um, shelter in the gym at the high school. So we need blankets and cots to go to the high school. So he would register the event and alert everyone in town about, you know, the giving chain and they would either um, try to be a part of it in one way or another, hopefully. Uh, so if I have blankets, I put them outside my door. I go to the givingchain.org. I see the registered event, I go in, I, I register as a donor, I put the stuff outside my door, I take a picture of it, and then I'm done. Um, that picture becomes an NFT and alerts, now this is the hard part, alerts people in the system to transport the goods. <laughs> mm. That's a that's a big ask and a big give when you like really look at what that means, like who's in the car, is the stuff needs to be refrigerated, like is it fit, like whatever it is, it really has a lot of complexity to the supply chain piece of this. And then again, the so for instance, if it's just like the high school kids in their cars, they go to, uh, they've been alerted because the NFT was created that there's a donation. They go to that uh, GPS location, they pick up the blanket, they take uh, possession of the NFT, um, take a picture of it, it becomes part of the metadata. They go on their way. When they create the metadata for that NFT, that alerts the recipient that a donation is on the way. When the donation gets there, the same process happens. The, uh, the recipient takes that digital picture and that becomes the last piece of the, the tail of the tape of, the, of your donation. And you can go look at it on the dashboard. So you can see where your physical donation, but again, without having um, supply chains set up that transport piece is a big ask. So that's where we're kind of at with the giving chain. Um, mm -hmm. So we're working through some, some stuff. Okay, good. Yeah.
Let, I've got a lot of questions, quick, but I'll save them. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's do a quick time check. We got 17 minutes before the top of the hour. Uh, I don't think we're going to get through all these <laughs> realistically here. Um, you know, no, maybe Jeff can give, a, can give a this thought. idea of these. So is uh, this, the idea of these? Yeah, I think it's I given an idea. There, yeah. Just to bring these conversations up, like with Bobby, with the NFTs and AI and so forth. So um, I can keep going through them if you'd like. I don't know. Yeah, if let, let's do uh, that. Let me add one other thing here because uh, what Jeff and I, Alicia, talked about a little bit is. We, we knew we weren't going to get through all these in, in great depth. And, there, and, you know, Ayan, I'm sure you have ideas. Ned, you have ideas. Um, you know, Barry, you have ideas. David, you have ideas. Toby, you have ideas uh, out there, too, that we want to get in. So this this form here, kind of like if you're part of the ebook last year, you can comment on this form. And we can use this as a vehicle in between these calls to kind of keep the ball rolling um, here. So look for a comment string, go back to this page here, and this would be a, a mechanism for us to uh, hopefully at least start you, boiling down into which ideas make sense. And the other part, and Alicia said something here, is you know even if something's not a project, but it could be a very good webinar, right? So mm -hmm. if, you like, if you like the idea and you know somebody who does something, in that area, or you know, we want to figure out a way to, to bring that out. We got to go find somebody, and you want to lead the charge to try to find somebody. That'd be a beautiful thing, also, um, because we're not going to do all of these. We'll probably only do one or two, and we might even do not do any of these, and some other br brilliant idea comes up. Mm -hmm. So let me leave it at that. Jeff, you want to just tick through these a little bit, and then let's open it up. Can I actually make one little, one quick interjection? For those of you who are interested in making a comment on the page, the way to do that, you see where on the upper right hand corner of the page itself, it says log in. You do need to log in with your Linux Foundation ID. Once you've logged in at the bottom of the page, there will be a comment field. So then we'll be able to have a comment, have a conversation on this page itself. Okay, let me, let me do this. I don't think you're going to see my Google ID. There you go. Yep. And there you go. There right. You go. Yeah. Exactly. You can this also edit that comment. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first comment. <laughs> you can also go in and edit that grid and those okay. columns. Jeff, I think I might go in later and the older um ideas at the very top that are no longer in discussion, I might add them to the bottom so that your more recent additions will be the first ones that are seen when people come to the page. Because okay. people might not know that it's scroll down. And I'm gonna go save there. Okay. So we so you you got the list here. I, I I'd rather stay away. The next one on the list here is this competitive analysis between fabric. I think that's other another group skip that one. Yeah, the technology committee. Let, let's really stay focused on where we're adding value in supply chain trade finance. Yeah, there. you'll see some of these things kind of have some similarity. Again, they were ideas. I think we'll skip that part of analysis one. The next one, where'd we go here? Right here. So we, we covered that one, um, I think. Hold on. No, we were talking yeah, NFT. We, did, we didn't. Maybe we did get down, and I just we got I past just, the NFT. We skipped a bit of analysis. Um, and the next one after that was going to be um, risk reduction in supply chains, um, providing information, investigating how. And now this ties into like AI. So AI uh, again, this is a topic that may fold into another one of the items I have up there about how AI can reduce risks, and that's. We look at today with what's going on in the uh, in the Gulf, what's really going on in the Panama Canal with the drought. Um, how can AI assist supply chains financially in the sense of what is through the data that AI can come in, which also is part of IoT, um, which way should I send my oil tanker? Maybe is maybe the fees have gone up so much in the Panama Canal or the risk is so high in the Gulf that I'm gonna send it on the Horn of Africa. So and that's stuff that's actually going on today, those kinds of things. So how specifically can AI assist in risk reduction? You take that and put it up in the other topic I had up there, 
maybe that forms something bigger around AI and um, and supply chain. And I'm looking at the clock here. So um, next one, yeah, the next one is um, you know we touched on this on the ebook, but this would be a deeper dive in exactly how um, retail level how fabric performs uh, how it performs to, to prevent um, fraud tampering so on and so forth so it's, and we just kind of touched on that with the Everledger example um, that one there is um, you know, I was looking at some of these things around I was actually looking at myself in some respect just take this on myself as around you know we talk about technical architecture on Hyperledger is um, putting together a document I couldn't find it and I'm trying to find out who to contact does somebody have a document that shows the fabric architecture at a technical level and how that enables the efficiencies around supply chains if we incorporate some of these other ideas out there that we've had so far so who do we contact um i i do attend the technical overview committee of hyperledger projects but those are really coding ideas and so forth so I, that's almost something that i have listed down here but i also have in my notes is to figure out how we can get some of this information to bridge the the tech, technical aspect of supply chain with fabric versus the non-technical aspect, if that makes sense. Again, yeah, that's around. That could include NFTs, and I've mentioned NFTs to people, and they look at me and they say, I heard of this. I don't know what it is. What is it, a picture I get? Well, it's a little bit more complex. There's, there's key, cryptographic keys. Somebody said, do I need a wallet then if I get an NFT? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. A wallet to the block, interact with it. You have to have a wallet. You know, Bobby probably has more of that information than I do. They store the NFTs off chain because that on chain is expensive. How does that really work underneath all that stuff? So it does have to be a deep dive down into the software Java code. But um, again, it, it's one of these items around bridging for people the technical aspects of fabric with much aspects of supply chain. If that makes sense, what I just said. And I and I think the document that for this one, I. Mean, uh, Andrea just published something. Ayan, you may have helped him with that. I can't remember, uh, but basically, here's how trade finance actually works. He put it out there on LinkedIn, and he put something on um, in, in in our wiki in the messages. So I'm assuming he's going to go next to. He, here's the diagram of how it could work in blockchain. You're smiling, Ayan. <laughs> Just in, in the, if you have the five minutes, I would like to, uh, to say some of, of my own comments regarding the my own idea for the for for twenty or twenty four. Uh, yes, I would like to add my own best effort to support the community to support the uh, seek in any way. It's not a problem, but the, I do believe in the geographic di diversification of the group members and the and the, we need to pay the much more attention on this i think that is the one of the point which i would like to emphasize on and the, i believe that uh six is our six is so much important and which six is need to be promoted at the level of the linux foundations at the highest level and the, i believe that which will bring the so many newcomers and the, those newcomers will bring the new ideas and the new projects to be able to easily implement it. And the, when I think of the trade finance linked with the blockchain has not died, <laughs> but uh, when I look at the real real life examples, uh, so many projects have failed. And the, when I when I see when I see the those results, uh, I would like to make a, some kind of the connection with other six directly linked with the digital assets or the real assets, real real world assets tokenization. I, I mean that we need the kind of the a constrict a specific bridge between the trade finance and the real real world assets tokenization. And the I would like to learn what the other six are dealing with these topics or not. And the, we would like to consider to invite them to make their own presentation at our seat. And the, that's why it's quite important. And the, when I look at the, the global report, which has been issued by Deutsche Bank one or two weeks ago, uh, which is the 60 pages, only the one or two pages about the blockchain's role, 
that that is that is the not good, but uh, that is the reality. We need to be accepted. Uh, that that that's that's why we need to pay much more attention about the big brothers like the IBM, like the Microsoft. Microsoft. As far as I have understood, that they are trying to make a kind of the interoperability bridges. Uh, that's 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 the crucial point when we start to think of the, the trade finance and the. It might be the option IBM and the Microsoft already started to make their own search, uh, their own planning about the interoperability solution. Uh, I'm not very much sure whether it's it's meant any blockchain solution or not, but the interoperability uh, via IBM or Microsoft will be will be the kind of the game changer when I think of the, the trade finance uh, environment, global em environment ecosystem. And the uh, and and of course uh, paperless environment is quite important, and the but the life is not so much faster than we expect, when we think of the highest level of the implementation of the electronic bill of lading solutions. We need we need much more time, uh, especially when we think of the the, uh, the main constraint, which is the reliable system. There is no any more rule. Uh, officially announced that which what about about the, the terms and the conditions of the reliable system which will be the running on the blockchain which will be the running on the enterprise solution or the public solution or the permissionless system whatever it is we have we do not have any kind of the uh, solution in our hand when we consider the any kind of the blockchain solutions. Uh, regarding the e bill of lading, and that's why, uh, if I need to summarize, our SIC is so much valuable, and the, we need to promote it at the highest level of the Linux Foundation, and the, we need to kind of to make a bridge between the real world assessed SIC, uh, if any, at the Linux uh, Hyperledger uh, groups. And the, we need to we need to understand the interoperability solutions of the big brothers like IBM and the Microsoft. When I think of the, the trade finance, it will be the crucial uh, in global basis. And th th those are will be the all sub projects. Uh, and I'm much more appreciated to see the uh, Jeff's uh, project, which he kindly. Uh, summarize it and I will review it very deeply I promise it and the, it's quite good and the I'm not promising the <laughs> entire the, my uh, proposals in, in such a good way but the I will try to invite some of my uh, friends uh, about present their blockchain solutions regarding trade finance or or e-bill of lading solution in the coming months uh, I will be the uh, I will try to be the, a good uh, follower and a good supporter of the SIC uh, for the coming days. Uh, thank you, and uh, hopefully, hopefully meet with you soon again. Yeah, and thank you for uh, jumping that, in. That DOL bill of lading is a big topic that you hit on. That's you, 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 you got info or people that can talk more about that. That's huge. Yes, yeah, we, we, we all, yes, abs, 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 absolutely, you, you are right, but the, I am not a technical guy, but the, I have the much more ambition to learn the, what you are talking about with the, <laughs> and that, that's, that's why I'm still at the learning phases. Uh, but the, when I look at the real world, it is not much more uh, good for the trade finance. All, all platforms failed, and that's, that's the reason. Uh, I have the big question mark in my mind personally. Uh, link between the blockchain and the trade finance. That's why we need to make a kind of the separate link. Yeah. Forget the trade finance terminology. Let's talk about the real world assess tokenization. That would be the uh, another good option. Uh, well, yeah. because whenever whenever you think to the trade finance, it's a matter of the movement of the money, of the movement of the goods. When you talk, when you talk of the goods, that's the real world assets. Uh, we do not need to say other 
traditional terminology, trade finance. It is a traditional terminology, and the, we need to forget all of those things for the coming years. And the, that's why uh, we need to make a new world. Uh, as I am the old <laughs> uh, trade finance guy, it's time to build a new world. Old guy, huh? No, I attended a, I, I attended an expert AI thing, um, the experts on AI, and there were three fellows from IBM on this thing, and this was about a month ago, and I was, I think it came through, I, I don't think it was a meetup group, but what was interesting was to get the media, the experts, the real experts in IE are these guys in their 60s, pushing 70, these IBM fellows. These are the guys out there that are doing the strategy around it today that are helping companies understand what to do with AI. It's not the 20 year old kid out in that just graduated from school in his mother's basement. It's these very experienced, polished people. I was surprised when I attended it. The moderator probably in his 30s, but these these guys were, I was like, that actually made sense. What they, what they're, they're the first people, two of them that developed, uh, what's IBM's AI? Thing. It's not called Watson, is it? Whatever their AI offering is, these guys will architect and help develop it. These guys are in their 60s. So there's a, one thing I wanted to mention also was um, some of these uh, with some of these other SIGs. I attend uh, the financial SIG. And I attend the uh, just just my listening in the carbon accounting SIG. And twice the last two presentations they had involved supply chain. But it was in their city. Good deal. And the last one, it was so they were talking about supply chain and trying to figure out how to do benefits around it. And I gave them the link to the ebook. This company's in Barcelona. I was hoping they would fly me there, but I guess not. And they pulled the ebook down during the conversation. We're talking about it, our ebook. So there's a ton of synergies out there. And I, I, it was recorded. So let, let's. Let, let's break this is a good discussion here i i'm debating in my mind i'll throw it out there i mean do we use the next session for we 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 use this this page here to have back and forth comments over the next uh two weeks or so and maybe we can use in part of the next session or all the next session to find we try to finalize things and but Jeff, you know that'd be pushing back years till March. So I'm going to throw that out there as an option. We don't have to decide it right now. Uh, here, let's see how what kind of progress we can make. You know, commenting. And I'd ask each of you to comment because Barry, I'm sure you have great ideas. David, you have great ideas. Christoph, Christos, you have good ideas. Toby, Ned, etc. Right. Get your take a look at what Jeff has put out here. Put your thoughts. Whatever else. If there's somebody else who you think, you know, I on your, your point about, you know, letting other people know, getting them to add their thoughts yeah. uh, to these. And it, it'll kind of come together, hopefully, um, or we might have to wrestle it a little bit because we got too many good ideas. <laughs> you know, and that's a good problem to have if that's the case. And we'll have to just pick, prioritize and pick one uh, out there. So and let's think about what deliverables might look like for each of these ideas as well. Yeah. Does it mean a webinar? Does it mean a blog post? Does it mean another ebook? What What do we want to want to do related to these topics? Yeah, it, it was. Um, I was thinking about this yesterday evening. You know, when we many of us came from the corporate world, and you know how fast Jeff you alluded to this, how fast the things get done, right? You know, project you got somebody busting you, it needs to be done by end of February or whatever. Well, in this kind of world. I was kind of thinking, you know, it takes two to five times longer. So think about right. your corporate enterprise experience and how long things take to get done. Try not to. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> Thank God that's over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I don't, there's a lot I don't miss about uh, my corporate experience. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's a lot some... of, uh, so, so anyways, with my, my, my thought here is, Let's use this 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 mechanism here, the wiki. We can put comments. It kind of worked pretty well for the ebook to kind of keep us rolling. Please put it. Please put at least one comment in over the next uh, week or two. 
here. And then we'll see if, if, if it takes on a life of its own, then maybe we can do all there. We have a little bit of the next time is, um, you know, kind of just settling on something. If we need more discussion, then we use the next time for discussion uh, there. So again, Jeff, I don't want to put you off, but I also want to, you know, make sure that we have. No, that's good... okay. Give me, if I need a little bit more time to do that presentation, because I'm trying to also use it to draw in some technical folks and see the invite. Yeah. Out on Discord. So, Dan, am I pronouncing his name right? Dan, am I pronouncing? Oh, oh, there you are. I hope he's pronouncing his name right, but he touched on something that I have out there about why has a blockchain been adopted quicker than in the past as one of those items. And I think he was touching on some of the trade finance. So okay. He have a lot of interest in changing that and adding comments Good. to it. Good. Okay. So let, let's stop at this point in time. There, there are a lot more thoughts. Hopefully they're rolling around in your mind. Get something out there. I, I generated the first comment, albeit not a lot, not very deep <laughs> there. Please put your additional <laughs> comments in there, thoughts. Let's see where this goes. And, you know, we'll all be talking in a couple of weeks and we can continue the conversation and hopefully start narrowing things down if we can't do that via, via the uh, comments back and forth. So I appreciate everyone joining today, adding your thoughts, and you got a chance to see some of our thoughts to kind of kickstart this puppy. Alicia, thanks for talking charter and um, how you can get involved. You're all here and glad you want to be involved and look forward to the rest of 2024 supply chain and trade finance, seeing how we're going to help this community uh, out there and ourselves and have a little bit of fun along the way too. So with that, I'm going to stop it. Recording will be up on uh, YouTube. Thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks bye, y'all. Thanks, Enjoy everybody. Bye, bye. bye, bye. Thank bye. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye, everybody.